third quarter highlights in a moment. But first, introduce you to a young man who's come a long, long way, not only on the football field, but geographically as well. We get more on Romeo Bandison from Pat McGilvery. Romeo Bandison walked onto the football field at Oregon in 1989, an unknown commodity. He was raised in the Netherlands, where American football is nothing more than a club sport. At age 15, Bandison had to buy his own gear just to get a chance to play. Then he became an exchange student, played one year of high school football in the U.S., and the Ducks took a chance on him. The chance paid off. Bandison has become a force on the defensive line. First at defensive end, then last year at nose tackle, now back at end. All this from a European whose first love was, of course, soccer. It's the skills developed for soccer that's helped make Bandison so effective in football. I think it helped me a lot, you know, the running we do and, you know, the foot control that you need to have with the ball. I think it helped me a lot with my balance and all that stuff. Of course, to be a good defensive end, it helps to be six foot five, 285 pounds, and one of the strongest players on the team. Bandison also has that intimidating attitude so familiar on the defensive side of the ball. I think it's more being able to put fear in somebody else and then getting up and doing it again. Every time they come your way, they're going to think, oh, there goes that guy again, there goes that guy again. I think that's the most fun part about it. He makes it home to Amsterdam at least once a year, where his family and friends sometimes find it difficult to comprehend all he's going through 6,000 miles away in Oregon. I don't think they realize how much time I have to put in and then still go to school. So they might just you know, play college ball. They don't see the, the school part and all the hard work we have to do besides that. Still, Bandison hasn't been happy with his play this year. He began to show what he could do against Illinois, just in time for the start of the Pac-10 season. For the Rich Brooks Show, I'm Pat McGilvery. I guess first question, Coach, are you uh, beefing up your recruiting efforts in the Netherlands? <laughs> Maybe we should. Huh? Maybe we should. A pretty good player, a guy that uh, a raw talent physically when he came in. He has had to learn how to play the game of football and learn how to play in the trenches because in soccer, uh, if you hit somebody, it's a penalty and you can get thrown out of the game. That's true, Todd, but uh, the amazing thing is about Romeo is not, not only how well he picked up the fundamental part, but he has instincts that you don't teach in football. He just has a way of feeling the blocks, slipping and sliding, and, and using his natural body his strength and leverage to shed blockers and get to the ball. I, he's a, been a remarkable, remarkable player for us, and, and uh, I think he clearly played his best game at Illinois and uh, looks like he's ready for the for the rigors of the Pac-10 season. It's interesting you mentioned that because last week, uh, Bandison and Jones and some of your other seniors felt that they hadn't played up to their capabilities in the first two games, and it looked like those guys made an ex you know, a, a big effort to turn things around this week. Yeah, I, I think that's true, Todd. And when you go in on the road uh, with a team as uh, physical and as good as Illinois and hold them to seven points, I, I've got to be happy with the defensive effort. Uh, under 300 yards and really, we had pretty well dominated him if we had not given him that last 15 play drive and some of that might not have happened had the officials called the uh, Illinois team for being in the neutral zone offsides on that last play when O'Neill took a 16 yard loss. Yeah.